Greetings folks, it's Professor Fiore, and today we're going to be looking at part two of variables for our C programming for embedded controllers. Okay, so what we're going to do is, I've already loaded a little program outline here. We're going to be looking at real numbers. That means floating point values, also known as floats, and double precision floats. So both of these obviously are values that can be uh, negative, positive, and have a fractional piece. Doubles are literally double the size of a float. They're 64-bit values. They have greater precision and range. And floats are 32-bit values. So you get greater precision and greater range with doubles than you do with floats. Most of the functions that we're going to use are actually set up to use doubles. Um, if you want to use floats, you might have an application where you have a lot of data and there's uh, you know, a, a memory crunch, if you will. Floats might be a better choice. But for just general purpose uh, work, we'll probably just stick with doubles. All right, so down here in main, we've got a declaration, double. So these are double float values. X, set that to 15, Y, set that to 2.1K, so we can have, you can use an E here, right, standard format, like on your calculator, so that would be uh, 2100 Z, and we have a little computation, right, Z gets the value of X divided by Y, and then here's our old standard printf. Notice we have a new print specifier here, the percent %F, instead of our old percent %D, so percent %f is for, obviously, a, you know, a float double value that we can put in here. So the first one is going to be x, and the second one is going to be y, and the third one is going to be z. Big surprise. All right, so let's um, compile this and run it. And as you can see, right, there's our 15 divided by 2100 equals 0 0.0 blah, 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 blah. All right, now, first thing that you probably noticed is all of the zeros and so forth on there. You have some options. First of all, you can put things out in uh, exponent format. So you can use, um, instead of using an F, you can use an E. And notice what we have here, right? So everybody's out in exponent and scientific notation, essentially. And then another option is to use a, a G, which will do the shorter of either E or F. All right, so 15 divided by 2100 equals, brr, so you know, whichever one's more convenient. If you use a capital letter here, like a capital F, a capital E, all right, do this capital E, this will be the nicest version. They think of everything. What you get is a capital E here for the exponent instead of a lowercase e. Your choice. OK, let's go back to our Fs. You might want to limit the number of digits you have here. So we can do a format specifier. For example, we can say percent %f, oh, I don't know, like I'll just use 8.2 here. So what the 8 is is the field width how many characters will actually be printed, and then the two is two digits after decimal point. So let's do that. I'll tell you what, let's make this six just to be different, and I'll make this E. All right. You know, by the way, you can also put a minus sign here. I think I'll do that right there. That'll left justify in that space of eight. Okay, so you can see there's two digits. You can see there's some leading space here, right? Because we get, it had eight total, but it didn't need eight total. So that was uh, right justified on that one. This one's left uh, justified. So that's pushed all the way up to the by. There's your two, two digits after the decimal. And there's our sixth space, right, with the E. 
and only two digits after the decimal. When that was, the E is exponent format, right? So we see the E over there. Cool. All right, now, you might wonder what happens if you mix a floating point value, a real value, with an integer. You know, how does, how does that work? Because they're stored di uh, differently in the, in the computer. Essentially what C does is it promotes values. So if, for example, X had been declared as, uh, let's say, an integer instead of a double, the value of X would be first promoted or converted into a double, and then the division would occur, and then you'd have uh, a double value for Z over here, right? So you can force that if you want to. I'll show you a real quick thing here. So let's say we had an int, I'll just call it a, and we want to do the same kind of thing. You can force a to be a float through what's called a cast. So I could force it to be, let's say, a double like this. So that essentially says, all right, take that variable a right after where it says double, turn that into a double, and then do the operation. As I said, in this particular case, it's done for you automatically. But there are certain cases where uh, you might want to force the situation. Okay? All right, so that's how we deal with that. Now, if we want to do um, anything beyond add, subtract, multiply, and divide, we're going to call functions. So, for example, um, instead of just doing a divide over here, maybe we want to say z is equal to x raised to that power, right? You know, some power. So, you know, maybe I'll like raise it to the 3.2 power or something like that. So I have this function, pow. You have them for trig functions, you know, logs, all of that kind of stuff. These are all sitting out here in our uh, standard library that, that has the, the math stuff in it. Okay, all of the math definitions and prototypes and so forth, right? Okay, so I could do the same kind of thing uh, there. I'm going to get a different value, obviously, but let's just see what happens. All right, so this happens to equal 5.8 times 10 to the third. All right, so like I said, any of these things. Now, if you leave the math header off, it's just going to assume that um, pow is some external function and it returns an int. All right, so let's just give this a shot. I'm going to compile this first. Now, I do have a successful build, but notice here we have a warning. Undeclared function pow, assuming it returns an int. Well, let's see what happens when we run it. Hey, that's not the right answer. Okay. Minus 1. Clearly, uh, 15 raised to the 3.2 power is not minus 1. So, you did not get the right answer. So, let's not forget that. Okay. Another thing that we're concerned with, let's get rid of all this. Strings. How do we deal with strings? Well, it turns out that strings in C are nothing more than arrays of characters. So let's make one. The way we make a, an array is with a little square uh, braces there. So produce a word like doggies. Oops, doggies. Now, the way this works is that um, this is just a sequence. In, in Python, it would be like... Uh, uh, like a list, right? You just have all of these values. The end of the string is defined with a null character. In other words, a numeric zero. So it's literally, you know, the code for D-O-G-G-I-E-S, and then a zero is in that final place. That's how a string is created in C. And we could also have a single letter. Uh, I guess I'll just call it L for letter, right? And I'll set that to, I don't know, A, like that. Okay, now to print, I'm 
we would use for the string would use percent s. To get the letter L, we would use percent C for character. Now notice what happens. I'm also going to include a percent D in here, right? Our old decimal integer. Because after all, it's an integer value, right? A character is an integer. So we'll throw in here. And then we'll throw in um, the L twice. Okay, so there's doggies, right? So the S and the percent S, the L and the percent C. So there's the character A. And then this last one, this is the numeric value, the ASCII code for a lowercase a, right? You could look this up, ASCII, American Standard Code for Information Interchange. Works great for English, but for other languages, we have to go beyond that. So nowadays we use Unicode, but that's sort of the old standard, if you will. And that's how you deal with this. Now, there are special functions to do things like copy one string to another. You can't just say like, you know, if I had S1 and S2, you can't just say S1 gets S2. That's not going to work uh, because it's an entire array of things that have to be copied over. So there are functions. You will find things in uh, string.h to do uh, string copy, um, you know, termination, only only copy a portion of a string, things like that. Right? String compare is, is one earlier in the alphabet than the other. Okay. All right, so that kind of covers most of what we need to do um, as far as uh, manipulation. So now we've covered integers, we've covered uh, real numbers, floats and doubles, and how we're going to do strings. All right, so now we get to start actually, you know, programming for real. See you then.